Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome everyone on another episode of Sisters Hour. Just wanted to say uh, Eid Mubarak, Islam Raya. This is our first episode since the Raya celebration. I hope that you're all keeping well and staying safe. It's been uh, a bit of a mixed one this year for Raya, but I hope that um, you're all keeping well. It's in London for us, um, Alhamdulillah, since Monday, we've been, um, the ease of lockdown has opened up so that we can all start in meeting up. So I hope that uh, you've carried on with your celebrations and started to meet with your loved ones. I know that uh, the other parts like Malaysia and Singapore, it's been the other way around. But um, again, um, we're praying that you're all staying safe and keeping well. We just wanted to um, welcome on board for all of those viewers who keep on joining us every week. Thank you so much for your wonderful support and welcome to the new viewers who is tuning in today. Um, we are starting our new theme of careers under the spotlight and I'm really excited with this next guest because it's someone who um, I've crossed lives with before when I was younger and I'm really happy that we're crossing lives again today um, just to touch on with careers under the spotlight is to look at another industry which we don't actually look at which is the in the media industry we watched loads of um, you know Netflix during this lockdown We've been watching lots of news of what's been happening around the world and I just think gosh how about the people that are working in this industry, what are they like and how do they get into this career? So I just want to say again, I'm really pleased with my wonderful new um, guest that's coming in today and she's coming in all the way from Singapore. Can you believe it? So without further ado, let me uh, take her in. Let's see, Assalamu alaikum uh, Nisaiba, how are you? Oh, I'm having a little bit of a problem here. Let me start okay. again. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Fatiha. How are you? Alhamdulillah, welcome. I'm so sorry, we had a technical glitch just now. We couldn't hear you, but I can hear you clearly. Um, thumbs up, everyone who's watching us. Can you hear us well? And do let us know where are you uh, joining us in? Are you in London or are you in Singapore, like Nisaiba, or are you somewhere else? I um, just wanted to um, welcome this Aiba and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for accepting our invitation. We're really, really excited because you are our first guest in to this career under the spotlight. Now, just to let everyone know, like I said, we when I was younger, I was studying in London and I met Nisaiba. Nisaiba, can you please tell us a little bit about your journey? And when you were younger, how did you get to London and what were you studying? Okay, so there's a funny story to it. Oh, first of all, Selamat Hari Raya, Fatiha. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> After all that. Okay, so what happened was that uh, I was from a commerce background. Uh, I took accounting, economics, business management for my A-levels. And um, yeah, and pretty much I thought I was going, going into the finance sector in my career. Mm -hmm. And while waiting for A-level results, so my brother actually told me like, hey, uh, my friend is looking for an assistant producer in this particular production company. Uh, go, go for it. Then I was like, huh? I was like, what does that do? You know, like, it sounds so serious and everything else. So he said, might as well while waiting for your results. So at that time, I was just 18. I went for the interview and then I learned that, oh, I was supposed to send emails, like uh, source for locations and sponsors, taking care of the crew and talents and everyone else. And I thought, yeah, okay, I can do that while waiting for my A-level results. So three months after that, I fell in love with the job. I love the adrenaline rush. And because of that, I had to break the news to my parents that I wanted to switch major to media. So yeah, that's when I left for the UK, attended uh, University of Westminster, and I took TV studies. Uh, yeah, so, and that's when I also met you during a netball match, isn't it? During one of the Malaysian games. <laughs> Mashallah, I never knew that you went to Westminster. I went to Westminster as well, but I did business studies. But oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> but I think you're in the central London branch, whereas I was... So, uh, mine was in Harrow. I was in Harrow. No. <laughs> Mashallah. Viewers, this is real. 
this is me and like, this reaching out and not knowing. So we must have crossed paths during the library or during the canteen and yeah. there was another amazing. But we met someone else at your Makan Cafe or at some netball match. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So how did your parents take it from accountancy or the, you know, the numbers to suddenly media? Did they take it well? Yeah, I mean, there were some concerns initially, but um, Alhamdulillah, like my lead dad was very supportive of me and yeah, my mom just followed suit and my brother at that time, he was uh, also studying in London. So he said, yeah, I mean, might as well just um, come and pursue the studies there. So it was a big move and yeah, definitely a, a wise one for me. I made a perfect choice. Fantastic. No, that, that sounds really great. And, you know, I think that's the best part because um, growing up, no matter what you want to do, you have to be really transparent with your parents. And I think it's that communication and for them to have trust in you as well, because whatever it is that you do in life, you need your parents' prayers. You know, you need their well-being so that they can always trust you and they know that you're going to do well. So I'm really happy that, you know, it turns out. That's true. Alhamdulillah. So um, what happens and what, once you graduated, you returned back to Singapore. How did your journey start then? Um, yeah, I mean, initially I thought I, will, I was just going to come back for a while and go back to London again for my master's. But um, somewhat like after I came back, I got hired back by the same company that I left many years ago. So, yeah, my journey continued from there. So it was fun starting off as a junior producer after I graduated and then slowly climb up. And because I already had experience as an assistant producer and also in London, I yeah, I did some internship here and there. So I kind of like see some of the, have an idea of what to expect uh, during production. So, yeah, then from there and now moving forward, I'm actually running my own production company with a partner. So... Yeah, surviving. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> no, it sounds great because I think, um, I, I mean, I don't know personally about the, the media industry and I always wondered who are these wonderful people behind the screen who create these wonderful programs, you know, to the lighting, to the sound. It, it must be a big team that you work with. And do you work with a lot of people most of the time? Yes, yes, definitely. I mean, like, um, I'm like different company companies run their production differently, but uh, for me as the producer, yeah, I'm I have to meet like the whole team because that's my job. I have to oversee a production from start to end, so I have to deal with the. Uh, I mean, I I met directors, uh, DOPs, director of photography, uh, stylists, uh, editors. I mean, like it's the whole team. And um, it's a huge responsibility and it's definitely a stressful environment and challenging one as well. But um, yeah, each of their roles are just as challenging because we are constantly thinking to be creative all the way. So yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, but it's still a fun job for me. So I enjoyed it. You know, um, it, I mean, I, I, I come from a family of... Uh, you know, a, a family that runs a restaurant. So my world is all to do with food, catering and services and things like that. But I can imagine your world, like you just said, you know, with directors and stylists and makeup artists and all of this, it must, it must be nice because you get to meet a lot of people. And like you said, it's, it must be um, quite challenging at times because you have to communicate with a lot of people as well of what you want and how, things are in terms of communication how do you keep that grounded because you know you need to have that kind of vision the same vision and kind of like communicate that well to everybody else is it something that you've learned along the way or is it something that someone's taught you like oh um Saiba, you know with these sort of people you need to be more directly or with that sort of people you've got to be more sensitive in that way um, it's something that you learn along the way. So I, I've kind of like lost count how many programs I've produced, but each program definitely gives me like uh, a lesson to learn or more than one lesson to learn, like uh, things that I know that I have to improve on in terms of communication, in terms of uh, handling talents or handling different teams, uh, different production teams. So um, yeah, so that's why they say, I mean, like the more experience you get, 
the easier it becomes. So that's how, and for us, like, it's always challenging for us to push our creative boundaries, especially in this new age, because we are not only producing content for free to air or even cable channels. There's like online content on so many platforms and we are constantly in the audience pattern in viewing, like programs are changing. So it's like, we are always pushing ourselves to produce the best content that we can come up with. So um, yeah, definitely it's something that you learn along the way. Um. For a lot of industries, I find that whenever you get to the top, it seems to be mostly mo mainly male dominated. Do you ever find it like that in your industry or with your other colleagues, with other male producers? Okay, I'm. Um, I mean, I can't. I, fortunately for me, because I'm from Singapore, and we don't. I don't really have that issues because uh, producers or even for other roles get paid differently as it goes back to how much experience we have attained over the years, and uh, yeah, we are like being paid to what we ask for based on our own merit. So, uh, if you ask me, I don't really see much gender in inequality on my end. Um, I'm not sure about other countries though, because I've never worked. Uh, as a producer in other countries, I would love to. But um, yeah, I mean, for Singapore, um, nowadays, like you can see, there are more female producers, so that's a good sign. And even like DOPs as well, I'm beginning to see some other female DOPs because, like cameramen, you always see men, right? But now, yeah, you're starting to see others. Even directors, there are there's a growing number of female directors as well. So it's a it's a nice setting for the female. Uh, for female producers, directors, editors, whoever wants to delve in this media industry, there. I mean, there's opportunities everywhere for the female now. Oh, Alhamdulillah, that's so good to hear. And it's so good to know that where you are, like you said, that there's not that much of inequality, which means that, you know, um, things are positive on your end. And I hope, like what you said, that there's going to be more growing numbers of, you know, uh, roles um, like directors and DOPs and things like that for these female um, figures. Um, I wanted to ask you, now, I, I know you just spoke uh, earlier that you, you are married, you've got two beautiful girls. How do you manage that? I mean, you know, you've got this career, you said it's stressful, you must have really long hours of work. How do you balance uh, between life and I mean, work life and home life. Um, yeah, it gets crazy at times. But um, of course, first of all, you need to get tremendous family support because uh, this job like requires you to be away from home 12 to 16 hours, especially during uh, filming season. And uh, we hardly have any breaks until the whole shooting or the whole job is done. And uh, there are times also where I'm required to go overseas for shoot. So that's, again, time away from family. And after that, once you have your own time after, there's like a production period where you just need to have some time to rest. You need to manage uh, time to have like some time for yourself or for myself so that there's like, I can stay sane for, <laughs> for a while. And then there are times also that I have to manage time for my kids, uh, for my husband, for my mom. So like everyone gets like, a piece of me and yeah then after that we need to set time aside for me and my team to think of uh future projects like so yeah that little time we have we really need to manage our time really really carefully and um yeah with a lot of hard work and determination so that's kind of like pushing me to make sure everything is possible to do so can I ask you, because you said, you know, you, you've travelled overseas and you did a programme. Can you tell me that uh, the one that you um, uh, produced, it's in Sarajevo? Oh, the drama. Yeah, yeah. That uh, that was the, it was a 13 episode drama. So that was shot in Bosnia two years ago. And um, yeah, it was like very much an eye opening experience because uh it was uh, set in the 90s where there was a time during the Bosnian War and we had to recreate some scenes and then um, pulling it back to the current um, situation where this lover got re re reunited after that Bosnian War. So it was a, pretty much a love story. But uh, experience-wise, it was really nice because the Bosnians are lovely people. They have uh, lovely food and places to visit and... Yeah, so that was uh that was the time I was away for three weeks. 
Okay, that must, yeah, it must be quite long for your children to be away and for you yourself to be away from your family. But, you know, the, the opportunities that you get to travel, to see another country and to shoot that. And I think it's really nice because um, I find, I always wonder how, how do programs create these, or have these ideas? Because, you know, it's, it's a country like Bosnia, what? Oh, I, I would never think that. And yet, your team did think of it, you know, and you also said about history as well. It's quite nice because I think we lose touch, especially in this time of age where we've got our phones with us and yet we don't know much about countries, about history, even sadly our own history and our own culture. So how do you guys um, think of these ideas or is it like a large team that, you know, brainstorms it? Not really. It was uh, it started off with me and just my partner because um, every year our network has like uh, open up pitching. Uh, there's like pitching season, so that's when we are constantly racking our brains for new ideas and everything else. And we are like thinking, okay, if we want to do a thirteen episode drama, how different can this be? So that's when uh, we decided to try Bosnia because I mean, like to break from other countries that uh. I mean, we like to feature like Malaysia or Indonesia, other nearby countries. So this time we just want to go far. But it has to have a certain meaning like the what is it that make you want to shoot in Bosnia? What's the significance of it? So that way we know that, okay, we have to touch on their history because they are known for their Bosnian war. It has that Islamic influences as well. And that's when we want to educate our viewers. So, yeah, so we tie in the story back and forth and it, honestly, that was a crazy, crazy production for me, but it was so worth it because at the end of the day, like, um, yeah, it was well received and we even won a silver award at the recent uh, World Media Festival in Germany, Hamburg. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Many, many congratulations on that fantastic award because I think it just shows how well received it was, you know, and the... The, the story was fantastic, you know, the picture was great and, you know, for, for your whole team to go there and to film everything as well. And um, I suppose you're, I mean, you're you're working in the, the community for the Malays, right? You're creating programs and dramas for the Malays. Is there a particular type of um, story or, uh, you know, a particular type of theme that you have to think about when you're um, showing or educating the Malay community? Um, some, I mean, like, we do pitch a lot of ideas and some are based on what the network wants us to pitch because they will just give a brief and then we'll just follow suit. But most of the time, like, uh, there, there's always, like, uh, themes, like, uh, whether it's uh, love or family, uh, relationships. So, if with that kind of just one word, that's how we actually have to expand our brain to explore eight or 13 episodes of it. So that's when our creativity constantly are working because there are like, I don't know, 50 or even 100 companies pitching for the same idea or for the same brief. So can you imagine like us trying to be different and trying to win that pitch? So that's that's how much like we are trying to be different from others and... Like I said, I mean, now we are like producing content for not just free to air, but even for online, right? So the ideas that you have to expand are just so much that, and you just have to be different from others as well. No, mashallah, I can I can definitely see it in the work that you've produced. And can I just add, you've also won gold as well for another drama. Can you tell us a little bit about that one as well? Okay, that's uh, a tele movie for Mother's Day last year. Uh, it's called, you know, not last year, two years ago. It was called Mama Ku Bibi Ku. So it's like my mother, my helper. So it was about uh, this girl being raised by a deaf uh, mom, who at the same time was also raised by her domestic Indonesian helper. So uh, it's just that because the mother got so busy with, with her career and everything, and the girl actually seeks solace to her helper, who, which the helper actually stayed with her from since she was a baby up till she was like 15 years. So that's like a long time to be attached. And this was inspired by a personal story because my aunt's helper has been with us for 34 years. 
So even till today, she's still with us. So she's really like part of the family. And to get a helper that, that lasts as long as even 30 years, not even now, to last even 10 years, that's quite hard. So so that's the that's the thing that actually moved me. And when I actually discussed uh, with my partner and my scriptwriter, she added on another layer to make the mother deaf. So that, that that's when the characters have to learn sign language, you know, in terms of communication. Like you said, communication is key in family. And that's what we also want to portray in this uh, drama. So with all the different layers and elements added on, so I guess, um, yeah, that makes it quite an interesting drama. No, definitely. And I think it really suits with um, the community that's watching it because, like you said, you know, uh, our helpers are like our second mothers because our mothers are out there, you know, trying to uh, do their thing with their jobs and, of course, you know, come back to their families. And... And as working mothers myself, you you feel the guilt that, you know, you're not there for your children, but you have this woman at home who's there. And I, I think it's such a fantastic idea because how you, you portrayed this drama, you know, it, I think it touched on a lot of people and a lot of people could relate on that because everyone, most of the time, you know, if you're working, you would have a helper and you do rely on that helper. So I think it's such a nice bond as well when you see the child you know um i i think the relationship the way you portrayed it was really great and hats off again to your team for winning uh gold and i think it's such a wonderful series and if any one of you um viewers if you don't know what you're talk uh, we're talking about go on misai barahim's um Facebook page, look at what she's posted. It's again um, a wonderful drama. It's something that you can view online. Is that right, Miss Cyber? Can we view it online? Yes, yes. Uh, it's under Me Watch, uh, and I also uploaded on my Vimeo. So, yeah, I mean, I can actually link up uh, on my Instagram and my Poetry Emotion Instagram as well. Fantastic. Mashallah, thank you so much, uh, Fatia. <laughs> I'm just wondering so sharing about this, but yeah, thanks. <laughs> No, fantastic. And I think it's us, you know, like the Malay community here in London, we want to, you know, sometimes we want to reach back out to our homeland and see what's going on. And, you know, as much as there's British dramas here, it's always that we like to watch back out, you know, our homeland dramas. And it's something that we always feel that we can connect with as well. So, you know, again, thank you so much, Nusaiba and the team for, you know, creating all these wonderful uh, dramas and programs and educating us as well, because I think that's another thing that we need to remember from watching this. It's not just entertainment, but we learn a lot ourselves and how to deal with relationships, good ones, bad ones, you know, and to explore other cultures. Because I think with the, the Bosnian one, I, I really, I really felt that, you know, I was like, gosh, we're, sometimes we're in our own little bubble that we don't explore other cultures or we live in a certain, you know, environment that we don't know our neighbours as well, or things like that. So, you know, we do, we we should be watching all of these um, good programmes. So thank you again for showing this. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I just want to thank, like, um, people who give me opportunities, like, in London, like Azman, because he actually gave me a chance to intern at his post-production house, and then Kat Zahara Othman, uh, who was, like, a mother figure to me at the time, and she was the one who's always constantly with her camcorder recording, and I'm just like, wow, this woman is, like, a super woman, because she herself at the time was managing, like, three kids, you know, like, like, her three kids were just, like, so young. No, not three, four. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, so... Yeah. So yeah, that's that's how I got my determination, and and of course you have to have passion in this line. So without passion, I don't think you can survive. So that's just what keeps you moving forward. No, and th and thank you for mentioning their names because again, I you're right. You know when you when you look at other people, they're like they're your role models. You just think, gosh, if they can have a family and yet do what they're doing now and still carry on till this day you know auntie zahra osman she came onto our sister's our show as well till this day that's what you see every time you see her you see a camera on one of her, her right hand yes. and that's new to it so you know and you're right is the passion is what you love and if you can you know show it to others it's fantastic we actually have um funny enough we have a question from one of our viewers and it's my partner sarah noor she says 
as a producer yourself, what is your favorite drama or movie? Really interesting to know what you would like to watch. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, okay, I actually have quite a few movies, uh, and but most of them are quite old. Um, and honestly, I watch them for entertainment, so don't judge, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and also for work purposes at that time. So one of it, like Memento, I'm not sure if you have seen it. It's the way how it was edited and things like uh, Kill Bill. At the time, I just love um yeah Tarantino's Kill Bill with Uma Thurman. That's just me. Uh, for um, sad movies, uh, Fault in Our Stars. Yeah, and um yeah, and I love animation. But for dramas, uh, honestly, I'm inspired a lot by um Shonda Rhimes. So, because she's the one who created a lot of seasons of Grey's Anatomy, How to Get Away with Murder, and of course, Bridgerton. Like, I'm sure you know Bridgerton, yeah? So, yeah, Shonda Rhimes is like a clear example of being a female producer, creative uh, director, executive producer. All you know, She's holding like a lot on, she's having a lot on her plate, and yet she managed to deliver all this. So, that's something that I would love to have that kind of passion that, so if only I can actually dig into her brain and see what her secrets are, that would be so awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing that. You know, I just want to ask you, if you were to see your younger self, you know, your, your graduated self today, what advice would you give to your younger self about progressing in this career? Because I think you know, you we all like you said, you always learn into different things. What's the one key thing that you would advise yourself about, you know, becoming a producer right now? Mm, it's about patience because, um, yeah, we are constantly evolving in this media industry. So, like, you felt the rush and need to actually catch up. But it's actually more of learning, taking your time, understanding the whole media system. And, um, yeah, it's more like, Take things slow and not rush. Yeah. So yeah, patience is virtue, they say. So that's what I need to tell myself because I'm yeah, I can just go crazy at time. So <laughs> I don't blame you. I think this is the again, it's the era that mm. we live in. And it's funny that you say that because yesterday I went out somewhere and I was holding my my daughter's hand and we literally just crossed the road and the road gave me 10 seconds to cross. So do you understand, we live in this fast paced world that everything is a timer and everything has to be quick and we have deadlines and we have, you know, things that we must accomplish. And that's why I think that's how we are the way we are now, you know, but thank you. Patience is a virtue, definitely. We need to remember this. Um, and I still keep telling myself that, so yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. My my last thing I would like to ask, because it's something that, um, you know, the younger generation now is doing. Uh, I see my teenage daughter, she's really into this Japanese anime. She's loving the Korean dramas. And they themselves are more into the gadgets, into their screen times and things like that. And it's nice to know that they have a lot of content, but to, to, to kind of like... Um, kind of guide them to that journey if they wanted to go into this media industry and for example become like you a, a wonderful uh, producer is it is it a, a long road to go into is it a hard road to go into um you can see that because honestly uh networking is also crucial so when you actually intern or you get jobs it's best to make friends with as many people as you can in the industry because you never know because eventually this industry is quite small you tend to meet them again when you're like going from jobs to jobs especially when you're freelancing so with networking you can actually get opportunities here and there and um yeah as a start i mean when i was interning i didn't get paid so it was something that what you need is experience so you can't be choosy you can't be fussy i'm not sure about london but in Singapore, the younger generation here do think a lot about um, money as a start. As like right after they graduate, they want to know how much is their starting pay and things like that. By right, it's something like you should know like how much experience you're gonna get first before you start, you know, dwelling on it. But yeah, so yeah, I mean, um, 
your doctor can start off as an either assistant producer or production assistant. That's the way to climb up eventually because I was once, like I said, an assistant producer. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. I'll, I'll definitely tell her and she'll be so excited. So she'll be like, can I go to Singapore now? <laughs> sure, she can work with me. <laughs> I'll tell her, inshallah. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on today, um, Musaiba. It was really wonderful to hear from you, your journey as a producer. And it was, you know, something that I've learned a lot myself, um, how creative this industry is and how competitive it is, like what you said, you know, a hundred other companies, you go pitching for the same thing. Um, I always think that, um, you know, it's it's not that big of a deal, you know, they, there must be, you know, only a small number, but you're right. Um, it sounds like, a even though it's a small industry, but there's a lot of creative people out there. So I just wanted to wish you the very best of luck and Thank I you. hope that you continue to rock and do your best and, you know, produce uh, continuous amounts of wonderful programs and, you know, get recognition for all the work that you do as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Fatiha, for having me on board. I, I was really shocked when you asked me to come. So I was like, huh, are you sure? So, yeah, really on it. Thank you. And it's a nice session with you because the last time we met was like, what, in 2016? So hopefully we'll get to meet each other once this COVID goes away. Yes, please. And um, definitely, I, I pray that we get to meet each other face to face once more, once everything yes, is normal. Sure. Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much, viewers, for tuning in and for listening. Um, I hope that you had a, a good insight, just like me, and listening to Miss Saiba and her journey at being a producer and please um do check out those dramas that she was saying Nusaiba you need to link us in to the comments later um well, definitely I'm gonna be watching if if she wants silver and gold come on everyone we need to watch it you know it must be great <laughs> definitely so thank you again for coming on and thank you viewers for watching us and inshallah we are going to continue with this uh career under the spotlight talk for the rest of Shawal, hoping that you all stay safe and keeping well. Um, any last words, Miss Aiba? No, just stay safe and uh, yeah, let's pray that this whole COVID situation goes away so that we can actually, maybe I can even go to London for my next shoot. Inshallah, we would sure. love that. <laughs> I would love that. I miss London so much. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, thank you. Thank you once again and thank you viewers for coming on for Sisters Hour. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.